Now, so why is North Korea delving more into a bigger confrontation with Seoul and the international community by cutting off access to the Kaesong Industrial Complex? For more on this, we now turn to Dr. Kim Byung-ju, head of KLMP Consulting and a longtime commentator here on our newscast. Hello, Dr. Kim. Hello. Now, let's get right to the point. What is North Korea thinking? I mean, why did North Korea do what it did today? I think the belief, general belief out there among the analysts is that it's just another step for uh, North Korea to ratchet up the tension level there. And what the North Korea is doing is quite clear here. Uh, what they want to do is uh, through the uh, rocket test and the nuclear test, uh, war status alert, uh, even declaration of the restarting of the plutonium uh, processing, now moving on to Kaesong Gongdan. What it wants to do is it really wants to be recognized as a power to be sitting on the table together with the United States, and especially a nuclear power to be sitting on the table with the United States to negotiate, uh, ultimately, the peace regime here in, in the Korean Peninsula. Peace regime here, it sounds good, but what it means is the withdrawal of the United States uh, troops, and perhaps if they want to uh, you know, exert more pressure on South Korea to take over the country, perhaps, and maybe also the, the setting up the peace regime together with the economic aid system from, over, uh, from outside the world to sustain their own political and economic system without a change. That is their game plan, and this has to be just an additional step that we are seeing that they are taking. Uh, the problem is uh, this kind of a pressure with, through the extortion itself is not going to work. We know that, and this is a, you know, the democracy here in South Korea and democracy in the United States. And if uh, we had, uh, had been a some kind of political system like the North Korea, maybe leaders can change their mind overnight. But with these extortions, it cannot work out. But they don't seem to understand that, and they're just trying to increase the level of extortion so that uh, South Korea, oh, well, United States particularly, will be forced to be sitting at the uh, negotiation table. Right. Uh, this uh, inter-Korean joint industrial complex of Kaesong now, mm -hmm. it has a special meaning for both North and South Korea. Right. Uh, let's first take a brief look back at the history mm -hmm. of the joint park from the opening to today. Right. It's been uh, over a decade. Actually, it was the year 2000 when actually the private uh, you know, entity here, Hyundai, uh, group signed a contract, uh, not contract, but memorandum of understanding together with uh, their uh, North, uh, North Korean counterpart about the plan to set up this, uh, you know, uh, complex. And the uh, government uh, both from both sides involved later on. Of course, South Korean government got na uh, involved later on. And the uh, government's uh, agreement came into existence by the end of year 2002. And uh, construction began 2003. And 2004, at the end of that year, first product actually uh, rolled out from the, the industrial complex. And by 2006, the whole complex was in full operation. And 2007, we saw the overall output reaching 100 million uh, US dollars. And then since then, things have been uh, continuing. And until like 2008, actually, uh, North Korea began uh, airing these kind of threatening words about they can do something about the you know, you know, Kaesong complex. And what happened was uh, at the end of 2008, for the first time, North Korea kind of limited the uh, flows of traffic between North and South for the first time. In 2009, during the key resolve uh, military exercise in March, three times they did exactly the same thing that they are doing right now, this time today, uh, cutting off the traffic and then uh, you know, stopping the overall flow of traffic between South and North. And since then, there have been different developments uh, due to the Chenan and Yanpyeong, of course, mm -hmm. and different talks, but nothing fundamentally happened. And uh, s uh, for the last about three years, uh, we have not been hearing Kaesong Complex that much, but now it's uh, you know, back on the screen again. Right, so um, since it, it is uh, an industrial park, let's uh, focus on the economics of all this. Mm -hmm. Now, how many South Koreans have worked at the complex and uh, exactly how much money of South Korean money is invested in Kaesong? Right, currently this morning they were talking about 861 South Koreans currently uh, uh, inside uh, Kaesong Industrial Complex. So if something happens, you know, they are at, at, at harm's length to be uh, to describe it that way. And so that is the most uh, you know, urgent issue here, the safety of the South Koreans, 861 of them. The number could vary depending on how you count, but because there have been a few number of people who came down, uh, because North Korea right now is uh, not allowing the people and uh, the trucks and uh, material coming in from south to the north, but they're letting 
according to the reports, they are letting the South Koreans uh, leaving the uh, Kaesong mm -hmm. Industrial right. com Complex and coming back south right this moment. So, to answering your question, overall, officially, South Korean side has invested about 900 billion uh, won so far. But the thing is, 900 billion does not offer an uh, exact, uh, you know, c clear sense of the uh, investment that has been made because there are other additional investments such as, you know, offering the uh, facilities to provide electricity and so on. That costed about 2.3 trillion won together with other kind of facility investment. They are actually talking about altogether 6 trillion won at stake because, they, you know, it's not only the companies that are producing things inside Kaesong Industrial Complex, but other Korean companies who are working with these companies indeed here mm -hmm. in, inside South Korea, even though we have 123 companies directly operate, operating inside Kaesong Industrial Complex. So uh, money-wise, about six trillion, that's the maximum estimate we are talking about. People, uh, over 800 people, uh, possibly at risk, and then uh, 123 Korean companies directly producing inside Kaesong Complex at this moment. So about uh, six billion U.S. dollars um, mm -hmm. at stake here right. as for the South Korean side. Now many North Korea experts and observers have said, uh, have assumed that North Korea would not go ahead at least with this action as, mm -hmm. um, as Pyongyang really can't afford to shut down the complex. You know, with all the sanctions, uh, you know, being implemented on right. North Korea, right. I guess in, the North Korea's only legitimate source of cash flow is from the Kaesong Industrial Complex, and that Indeed. is why uh, a lot of us assume that. Yeah, that is so true, and especially this time when China itself is even tightening up its uh, channel of exchange with North Korea, Kaesong Industrial Complex, uh, its importance has become even bigger than ever before, and you mentioned it's the only legitimate source of making cash earning dollars and at this moment. Right now, according to the official record, North Korean workers on average are paid about $144 per month, and they have about uh, 54,000 people working in South Korean built facilities at Kaesong Industrial Complex. And that uh, produces about altogether uh, 90 million U.S. dollars per year for, in the form of North Korean uh, cash earning every year. And the thing is, it's not only just uh, 94,000 North Korean workers uh, working in these uh, factories, but also uh, their families, 200 or 300,000 uh, you know, more people there uh, who are depending upon these people there. So indeed, uh, the, the people's livelihood, probably North Korean regime can care less about that, but that cash flow of uh, 90 million dollars per year is something that's very, very important for North Korean regime. So that is why a lot of people have been saying probably North Korea it will be the last thing that North Korea will drop. Right, and you know, but as for South Korea, we did talk about uh, six billion U.S. dollars being at stake. However, mm -hmm. it's it's something that we can do without. Um, and so, with all these threats and uncertainties, uh, we just mentioned that there are about 861 South Korean workers mm -hmm. there in Kaesong Complex. So. Right who could be at, in danger right. should anything escalate beyond this point. Indeed. Why can we just not shut down the complex and you know, put a stop to all these worries? Actually, conservatives here in South, in South Korea and some you know, military-related folks have been expressing their view. You know, it was a, uh, not a wise idea to begin this kind of uh, project to begin with, and uh, we should find ways to close it down and shrink to the minimum or uh, leading to the, the zero status, closing it down ultimately sometime in the future. I think it's un one idea, but those people who want improvement with North Korea one way or another sometime in the future, this is the only remaining line of hope. So indeed, it will be difficult to cut off completely uh, this line of hope unless North Korea does something that's very dramatic, such as uh, you know taking uh, South Koreans as hostage or something like this. So for us, uh, I don't think closing down of the complex itself will be an option, at least at this moment, but it could develop into an option pr perhaps in the future, depending on the situation. Right. All right. Dr. Kim Byung-ju, uh, thank you so much for today. We'll talk to you tomorrow with other business news. Okay.